What up everyone, I'm Belle. Travis. And this is Vino Log number 27. As far as we know it, wine comes in three forms. We've had it in boxes, grown up, stealing it from our parents. We've had it in bottles as adults, so there's only one left. I mean, I guess there is a time and a place for cans. Maybe you're gonna go hiking, and when you get to the top of your hike, you want just a little, a little reward yeah. for your little exercise excursion. Mm -hmm. But this one in particular, there is a, is that a monkey? There is a monkey on the can. It has a monkey, and below that monkey just says white wine. What grape, what anything. Chardonnay, Sauvignon. Pinot Grigio. Not even dry, not even sweet. So check it out. So this company, Winery, it's an urban winery. Okay. Which means it's a winery in every intents and purpose, but it's located in the city rather than out in the field. So the name of the company, which is why there's a monkey on the front, is Infinite Monkey Theorem. No. Infinite Monkey Theorem is the idea that if given enough time, a monkey who doesn't know how to type and doesn't know our language could sit down at a typewriter and type out a whole Shakespearean play. Well, infinity is never ending, so anybody can do anything in an infinity, infinity amount of time if you think about it. You wouldn't be teaching this monkey. It would randomly be stroking the keys and type out a Shakespearean play. But infinity goes on forever, so it's really a crazy theory to me. Infinite monkey theorem. So I propose that we take a sip out of the can to see what's going on with that. Okay. And then maybe pour it in the glass to see if there's any difference. Okay. Right, Let's start. smell it just because we smell the other ones. Oh, yeah, I smell aluminum. Tin. Um, like fence poles. <laughs> swimming pool with like aluminum sides. Recycling bins. Tin man, even though I only saw him on TV, but I think it smells like tin. <laughs> Fillings from the dentist. <laughs> I really can't get any other characteristics from on the nose, but hey, that's part of the fun of it. All right, so let's take a sip out of the can and see what we get. All right. Ding. <laughs> okay, at first glance, if you were on a hike and it warmed up in your backpack and you drank it at the top of the mountain, yeah. I wouldn't say it was good, but I'd be happy I had it. In a pinch. In a pinch. In a pinch. Let's try it in the glass. Maybe that'll change okay. things. I can smell a lot okay, better now. Okay, now. Yeah. You know why? Because I read they said in the metallic can, it actually dulls the aroma flavor. Yeah, it definitely did. I kind of smell banana. Because the monkeys. Okay, to me, it tastes much better out of the glass. Much better out of the glass. It definitely has a different taste and it tastes like a normal, you know, house white wine. Let's rate it. What would you give it on our work in the weekend scale? I give it a one. But I want you to know that if there was a middle ground in between one and two, like one and a half, I'd give it a one and a half. If it was situationally rated, I would give it a two because we're backpacking, we're hiking, we're on a boat, <laughs> we're wherever, we're in a, a limo, going to a wedding. Okay. This is great for that. There'd be two for that, but it's a one overall. I would have to agree. I'm gonna give it a one glass rating. It wouldn't be my first choice. There's definitely a time and a place for this wine. You're not really trying to taste and get certain features of wine or really trying to like absorb it. You're just trying to have fun and drink something um, that you like. This has been Vita Log number 27 featuring wine in a can. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.